The Path of the Horse was for me a big uh, dream in my life. I was a horse trainer and riding instructor and had been so for 20 years. And I reached a point where I looked ahead and saw myself in another 20 years doing the same things, teaching the same lessons, uh, training the same types of horses. And it felt like I've already done this, I don't need to do it again. Over the years, I'd been reading about different horse people who seemed to do things a different way with horses. And I don't want to fall into the terms of natural horsemanship or horse whispering or any of that. There was something in what these people did that seemed to be more about the relationship than the results. So I said, well, if I could do anything, what would I do right now? And the answer was, go and meet these people, talk to them, watch them with their horses, and try to find what the secret is, and maybe find a key that I'd missed somewhere along the way. So I thought, well, why not bring along a camera and make a movie about it? I literally sold the ranch I had at the time to have the money to be able to do this. And I went around and interviewed Mark Rashid, Linda Kohanov, Carolyn Resnick, Klaus Ferdinand Hempfling, and Alexander Nevzorov. The biggest turning point was when I met Alexander in Russia, or actually, when I met his horses. These animals were different than any other horses that I'd met. Alexander works with their minds and their intellectual capacities. He always works with the horses at liberty, without halters or bridles or any way to influence a horse through pain. And his horses are always free to say no if they're not comfortable with the interaction. Given this choice, the horse becomes an equal partner, and they know it. They get very interested and playful. I stopped riding, stopped using bridles and halters, and began approaching my own horses in this way to see if it was for real. And, and I did find that secret, you know. I did find that secret. I found that horses aren't the beings that I thought they were. When we honor their intelligence, we approach horses in a completely different way. Just like it's unacceptable to hit a child or to rely on physical force and pain to create a relationship, it becomes equally unacceptable to do that in relationship to a horse. The problem is now, if I, if I tell people, they don't really get it. It's, it's not something you can tell, it's something you have to experience. The path for me since finishing the Path of the Horse documentary has been finding that path of feel. I'm no longer focused on a result, although results do come. I'm focused on following a feeling that comes from inside and then manifests as a connection between myself and the horse. Coming from a completely different premise, you know, like before it was, uh, what can I do with this horse? What do I want to do with horses? And now the question is, 
what can I do with a horse that's fun and healthy for both of us? These moments I spend with my horses become like a touchstone for the rest of my day of, you know, if I can reach out and touch the horse with a sweet simplicity, how can I transfer that to my relations with other animals and ultimately to other humans? Who's this person in front of me? How can I reach out and touch them in a simple, sweet way? So that we both come away with a feeling of being in love with each other. And it's not just me. In the years since the release of The Path of the Horse, I found others who are awakening to this consciousness especially in the younger generations. Hopefully, we can be the ones to open our doors to others who want to also be this way with horses, because I'm pretty sure it's how the horses want to be with us humans.